Okay. <sighs> All right, everyone. This is Missy, and we're going to do a maybe a lunchtime yin yang. I know a lot of times when I eat lunch, I want to start out a little slower. I don't have the luxury of being able to wait a couple of hours, um, but I still want to get a lunch workout. So we'll have a one hour workout here and we'll start easy and with some yin. Then we'll pick it up with a little yang and then wind down. So welcome, welcome to Thrive Yoga and Wellness Online, yin yang. Let's go ahead and start in easy seated, finding our breath. If you've eaten already, just engaging that parasympathetic nervous system so that digestion can begin happening. Maybe open your hands up and just relax. When our sympathetic nervous system is going on and so much of that's happening in the workday with all the stress or wherever you are, there's a lot of stress going on. So that inhibits digestion. So let's just really remember the, dra the, the breath and uh, leaving the stress for the next hour anyway. All right, closing your eyes, bring a nice big breath. And exhale, eyes closed, thinking about your intention, wherever that focus is, wherever your intention is, making sure that you remember that it doesn't serve your highest good to stress, to worry. It doesn't help anything. It's the opposite, actually. So bringing mindfulness and awareness to the fact that we need to keep that parasympathetic nervous system. We need to bring the calmness into our life, into our thoughts. Even if it's just for this hour, just let it go. Just think about peaceful things, maybe the water flowing. As you gently reach out with your hands, opening up your chest, maybe coming back into the room, staying with a nice big breath. You flip your hands, bring them up in prayer, in gratitude, looking up, maybe reaching up, really feeling yourself grounded from tailbone all the way up, reaching up in prayer and gratitude, coming into your forehead in peace. Om Shanti. Shanti means peace. Heart center, reminding ourselves that compassion is always the best place to start and end our day. Bring your hands forward and just come forward, wiggle in to a nice stretch here. And then sweep your hands over to the left stretching, opening up the ribs, nice way to get the digestive system working at a higher efficient level. Sweep to the center, stay with your breath, and sweep to the right. And back to the center. Sinking in here. Then sliding your hands up on your knees. Let's just go ahead and roll our shoulders up and around two or three times. And then reverse. So if you saw my sparkly leggings, then you'll have to let Jennifer know. She's got uh, new clothes, new yoga clothes here at the boutique at Thrive Yoga and Wellness. And so I just got these, and she's got a whole new line coming in too. So it's so much fun. Even if we're alone, it's fun dressing up. <laughs> and go ahead and let's, um, let's move over into tabletop. A nice shoulder workout, just uh, wiggling in tabletop. 
relaxing your body, any movement that you want to do here before we work ourselves into cows and cats and cows. I usually start in cows, so cows and cats or cats and cows. Inhaling, exhale, keeping the core, pressing the navel against the spine. And then come to a flat back and tabletop. If you want to wiggle around again a little more, just anything you need to do that brings in the mala beads you're caught. Okay, I'll be wearing mala beads. Yikes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we'll keep them on the whole time. Um, Let's go ahead and thread the needle, inhaling left hand up, reach, stretch. Bring that breath in, exhale, thread it through. Just finding your way here, melting into the mat. Feel free, if you want to make this more active, you can stretch out that right leg, keeping the core. You can really feel active glutes and muscles all the way up and down the leg if you want to bring the leg up up really fire it up if you want or you can just stay in a yin breathing in that threaded needle if you want to do some pumps up with the leg you can if you want to reach and grab the foot whatever you want to do this is your practice make it as active as you want and then just find your way back melting into this lovely pose if you're not already there few more seconds here. Then coming out of this, maybe sliding that right hand down, the left hand gracefully coming up, reaches back up. Maybe you want to look at your hand and then bring it down back on the mat. And then getting yourself back leveled out in tabletop before we prepare to come up with the right hand inhaling right hand up and reach and stretch feeling that nice twist here too and exhale thread through on this side and anything you did on the other side go ahead and honor that one this side few more breaths here. And then gently coming out of this, let that left hand slide in, right hand all the way up, reaches up another twist and bring it down. Any adjustment, any wiggling, anything you want to do to get the back opened up. We counter a lot of the a lot of the stress and the movement that we regularly do, giving a counter poses, reversing, keeping the spine flexible. Let's go ahead and tuck our toes in and sit back on our feet for a little reflexology. Search back and take a look at your feet and see if your pinky is in the party. So make sure all the toes are invited. And then just sink in. So this is a nice time to distract yourself because this, this really doesn't always feel so great. <laughs> but it's really good for your feet um, and those crazy shoes that we wear. So this counters a lot of that damage. And the one way our feet are always going. So we want to keep our feet flexible like we want to keep our back flexible. So I'll, I'll bring my hands in prayer and just remind myself of my intention, remind myself of my breath and <sighs> sinking in. A couple more breaths here. And then release forward with your hands, tapping the toes out. This should feel really nice. I also want to send thanks out to Athleta 
done some partnerships with them and given some discount cards to people in my classes and they do a lot for the community. They're a certified B corporation. Lifting up, place your hands on your yoga pockets. So tops, athleta, bottoms, and the top on the inside is Thrive Yoga and Wellness. So, you know, check it out. Come into camel. So gently releasing back, pressing your thighs and your hips forward as you release your back. Making sure that your head doesn't crunch. So don't crunch your neck down. Try to find a nice stretch out with your neck as you release your back and press your hips forward. So, you know, there's always go a lot going on in yoga. There's always somewhere else you can take your practice to the next level. Sometimes you step it up, sometimes you step it down. And gently coming up with core, protecting your back. Take a couple of breaths here. We're gonna do this one more time. Camel, wonderful for the back, wonderful to keep these uh, back bends in our practice every day to counter, um, you know, this. We do this so much at our desk, so much in our car. So we wanna do this, so relaxing back. A lot of core, protect your back. The core protects your back. Sinking in, pressing hips forward. Thighs forward, breath always flowing. Coming up. And for the third one, let's, um, if you want to, make it a little more challenging. You can come up on your toes or keep your feet flat. You can find a nice place to touch your heels and then pressing the hips out. Releasing, opening the chest. Don't crunch the neck. <sighs> this, is, this is a nice back bend. One more breath here. And then gently coming up slowly with core. <laughs> and then let's just sink into a child's pose to counter this. This should feel really nice. Opening your knees up as wide as you want. I like to open up really wide and just sink in with my chest and <sighs> melt into the mat. Thinking about peace, sending peace out to Mother Earth, sending peace out to humanity, sending peace out to the animals. Everything is feeling the vibration that's prevalent. And right now, there's been a prevalence of fear and stress. So it doesn't stop in your community. It certainly doesn't stop in your house. It doesn't stop with humans. Everything is sensitive and senses something. So we can stop that by personally being responsible for bringing peace into our lives. And then that's contagious. Come on up out of a child's pose and let's just come on back on in a wide-legged seated. So, ah, you might pop or crack a little bit. And so this is one of my favorites. Finding yourself just sort of wiggle in and tucking your hips and enough so you feel the lengthening of the spine. I like to bring my fingers out and flip. Bring myself up, looking up again. Gratitude, straighten up, really reach the spine. Stretching with the core, so we're strengthening the muscles that wrap around the spine. And then just gently coming forward. If you have any props for the yin portion or just any of this if you want to, um, have a, a bolster or a pillow or a block, then you can just rest on that. As you come forward, just warming up your legs. <sighs> Breathing here. I spent a lot of time a few days ago on an airplane, so I'm still not quite 
formed up. Sometimes it takes a little while to to get your body to open back up. So don't don't let it make you down. Just work with it. Give your body lots of love. Let's go ahead and move over to the left leg, torso down. <laughs> and just melt in on this side. After you relax, you may feel that you just sink right in as the fascia, your muscles release. Stay with the breath. The muscles need the oxygen. You can even wrap your hands around your feet, your foot. And then sweep to the center again. Maybe you go lower here. Just resting, releasing, relaxing. The yin really doesn't work as well if you're not just completely relaxed. The fascia can stretch if you're tense and constricting. So the, <laughs> the really wonderful thing is in the yin-like poses. You're doing the work if you're just letting the breath and the body release and relax. A couple more breaths here. Maybe you reach out and touch your toes, <sighs> sinking in, settling in, and then sweep over to the right side or the other side, <coughs> sinking here, <sighs> feeling the muscles release, ba expand, stretch. Tension leaves your body. Two more breaths. Maybe sink in a little more. Last couple seconds. And then sweep to the center one more time. How do you, how do you see yourself, um, have you noticed if you're lower, have you noticed that your body's more open now, lifting up, gently coming up, did you see how your body opened up in these poses after you relax and release, let's go ahead and come into a cobbler pose also known as Baddha Konasana. So just bringing the heels in and opening up, letting your knees release down. You can do this two ways. You can take it into more of a diamond shape, which is, is more comfortable with the fold. Or you can bring them in as, as close as, as you like, as you feel comfortable, and maybe open up the feet like a book. Straighten your spine. Press the shoulders down and back. If you had lunch, are you noticing your digestion has changed, that you're feeling not so bloated, not so full? You're bringing in peace into your body, so everything is functioning at a higher level. So when you get nervous and anxious, cycle three just stays there and digestion is blocked and it's not healthy. So stretching and relaxing, breathing, meditation, just overall yoga is so healthy for us. And let's go ahead now. And uh, in between, we're going to move into staff. But if you want to do a little windshield wiper with the knees, also known as Marilyn Asana, honoring Marilyn Monroe. We all love her, don't we? <laughs> and bring your feet out, preparing for staff pose. Dandasana, let's bring our hands up, stretch, reach, like I'm reaching up to the top of the tree. <laughs> I love the yoga tree. And then hinge forward, so don't fold yet, just hinge and keep the core. So pressing that navel, really making sure that the core is engaged here and then fold. And just breathe here. Again, we want to let the muscles stretch. We want to allow the fascia to expand. 
so the fascia is kind of like that case around the muscle. So when it expands, then the muscles have room to expand too. And it lasts. I mean, if you keep your practice up and you stretch your fascia, it kind of stays stretched for a while. So, you know, if you stop practicing, then of course everything's going to, you know, go back a little bit. But uh, practicing two to three times a week, always check with your doctor. Make sure that everything you're doing is okay. Special considerations if you have osteoporosis, high blood pressure, heart disease, so making sure that any of the poses or the workouts or the heat or the breath or the fold um, is appropriate for your health. A few more breaths here in staff. This is really good for the sciatic nerves. They call this a life stretch in Kundalini. So inhale, come all the way up out of this. And let's go ahead and get back into tabletop. Anything you want to do, if you want to roll your hips around a little bit, back and forth, just finding some more movement here, getting ready to all right up just a little bit, tuck your toes in, pressing with your hands, a nice big inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog, walk it out. Mm hmm. So we're going to move into a little more of the yang. Or we're going to move into the yang, pressing heels back. I have a new mat. This is great. It's very sticky. If you have music at home, feel free to turn your music up. We don't have music on the recorded. Um, videos because the sound isn't so great so just find your favorite tunes and let's boogie inhale right leg up just really reaching up with this leg a lot of oxygen in and bend and stack open your hips up wiggle the foot around motion is lotion need to move these joints to keep the fluid moving in your body inhale bring that leg back up and then bring it down. Next inhale, bring the left leg up. Stretch, one side's gonna always be a little more challenging. Press back, open here. Bring in the breath and bend and stack. And wiggle your feet around. Bring that leg back up and release it down. Walk it out, press and back. Let's go ahead and do some thunder dogs here and back and forward, lowering the knees to the mat. Hold it, hold it, back, press. Let's do five. Back, four. Back, press. Really fire up your glutes. You get what you put into this. Two. glutes back and let's just move into a plank so walking your hands out holding plank feeling the energy feel the core shoulders over wrists if you want to do three or four half push-ups or chaturanga push-ups then feel free to do that press back into downward dog and breathe. Next inhale, just walk your hands back to your feet. And holding your elbows, just hang here. <sighs> Picture frame your face. Maybe you rock from side to side. Drop your hands, let your hands, your fingers just slide back and forth. And then gently stopping the swinging back and forth and coming up, head and fingers come up last. Slightly bend your knees and roll your shoulders once you get to the top. Good. It was a nice little beginning to our yang flow. So let's just go ahead and bring in some nice 
twisting here. Feel like we're moving through water. Just letting your body twist. This is really, really relaxing. And then come to stillness. And just roll your head back in half circles from shoulder to shoulder. And then around the other way, don't crunch your neck. If this is uncomfortable in any way, then just do half and back and don't roll all the way around. So just listen to your body. Has really has nothing to do with age or gender or it has to do with where you are and where your body is. I mean, of course, some things with age get a little tighter a little more challenging, but you could just be stiff one day. So just take it easy, listen to your body. And then coming straight up, take your left hand, and let's just press the right shoulder down as you gently encourage the neck releasing. And if you want, you can take that right hand and just rub your neck, giving a little self-massage here. Since we can't go get a massage, <laughs> let's find ways to bring in these beautiful things into our own practice. And bringing the head up, release that arm. Now the right hand comes up and gently encourages the neck to stretch here. And the left hand can massage your neck and your shoulder. <sighs> and go ahead and make a loud sigh. Just the sound of that can often relax us even more. <sighs> and letting your hands fall to your side. Let's walk to the top of the mat. So let's do mm, three or four just sun A's without the vinyasa. So just move through the breath cycle. Inhale, come up. Exhale, maybe you swan dive down. Make sure your core is engaged, protecting yourself, your back. Inhaling, half lift, pressing shoulders back, slightly looking out. Exhale, fold, fold. Inhale, bring it on up. So the next three do on your breath. <sighs> Last one. come into mountain pose. Put your body piece inside the church. So let's go ahead and move through a sun salutation A. Surya Namaskar A is the Sanskrit word for that. Inhale, li look up, reach up. Exhale, come forward to Mother Earth. <sighs> Inhale. Half lift, finding your way between earth and sky. Exhale, planting your hands. Maybe step back with your right foot to plank. Feel free to modify. Holding plank. Finding your chaturanga. I go down to cobra because I injured my wrist, so I modify. Taking your vinyasa. Or just go back to down dog. Finding what works for you. Inhale, look at your hands on your exhale. Walk, step, jump, float forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, fold. Inhale, bring it all the way up. Let's do this one more time. To Mother Earth from the sky. Half lift. Exhale, plant your hands. Stepping back, left foot perhaps this time into plank. Coming into your vinyasa. Walking it out. Inhale, look at your hands. On your exhale, bring it back forward. Half lift. Forward fold. All the way up. And Tadasana. Beautiful. So from Tadasana, just revisiting your intention. Again, the peace that you've brought into your thoughts, 
and from your thoughts, it goes into your body, and from your body, it vibrates into the world, from your body and your thoughts, actually. Mind, body, spirit, we can't separate it. It was, it was never happening that way, it was just confusing it. We're all connected, we're all part of this breath and flow, and let's make our thoughts positive, let's make our breath strong and deep. Let's make our actions compassionate. Let's, lifting the left foot up, we're going to come back into warrior three. So you can do it through airplane or warrior three with your hands forward. And then come back into warrior one from warrior three. Bringing the foot back and... Hips forward. Yes, sticky hand. <sighs> Maybe a little bit of a back bend. Knee is going out toward the pinky. Releasing your hands behind you. Opening the shoulders. Your back should be warm from the camel. <sighs> yeah, we did and then come forward into a humble warrior. Lengthening the shoulders once you're down. Have to sneeze. <laughs> okay, it's okay. <laughs> the, the pollen, the weather. It's kind of strange right now, holding this humble warrior. Anytime you cough or sneeze, everybody looks at you. I'm like, I always cough and sneeze this time of the year. It's so weird, everybody's, what? <laughs> And then releasing your hands down. Let's go ahead and hinge forward. So make sure you got the core really hinged, really reaching. Fire up the glutes. And then scoop it forward and sink in. Beautiful. And then stepping back forward from your mat. Finding your Tadasana again. And this time, just I'm going to step off this. We've got two mats on top of each other, so it's really, really bouncy, and balance is hard then. It's a nice challenge, but I'm not up for the super challenge today. <laughs> Lifting your right leg up and bringing it back. <laughs> and your balance is always going to be different, so don't be hard on yourself. So from airplane into warrior three. Always feel free to kickstand if you need. Fire up the glutes. It does help with balance. And then just gently bringing that leg down for warrior one on the left side, sinking into your warrior one, doing a little body scan. Are your shoulders released? Are your hips tucked in there? Is your core, your glutes fired, feeling the energetic feeling of your body in this pose, this warrior pose? And then release your hands, clasping, Open up into the beautiful back bend, and then bring it forward, torso forward, lifting the hands, lifting the clasp hands, coming into Humble Warrior. And then releasing the hands, unclasping, hinge forward, really feel the feet pressing into the mat, feel the glutes fired up, lift the hands and scoop up. Sinking back in, feel the power of the pose, and then just come forward with control. Beautiful. This time, let's just step back into a warrior two. So bringing the, well, let's start with the left. No, let's start with the right. <laughs> we'll switch sides. Right leg up, knee up, bring it all the way up. Let's have some fun. Then let's bring it to the side. Bring it back to the front. And then back through warrior three again. Only this time, opening up into warrior two. Good. So this is warrior two on the left side. So we're honoring the feminine. We're starting with the left side this time. <laughs> Change it up. It's always good, right? It's good for the brain. So sinking into your warrior two. Your knee is over your ankle. Your shoulders are down, arms stretching out, feeling yourself as a warrior, 
but also feeling the tree in you, grounded in this feet, connected with Mother Earth. Feel the strength. Release the right hand, flip the left hand up, coming into Peaceful Warrior. Then bring this hand on top of the leg, shoot the right hand through, extended side angle. Once you're here, tuck your hips in. Feel the glutes fired up, feel the power in the legs. Everything is just really strong. Make it work for you. For a little core challenge, reaching out, holding the beach ball. If you'd like to come back into that shelf, the hand that's up, bring that right hand around, finding it meets the left hand, clasp, and open up into a bind. Okay. And then let's re release the left hand down and make some nice big circles with the right hand. If you want to follow it with your eyes, giving your eye muscles and your coordination. Good brain stuff to do this. Following your hands with your eyes. Up. And then placing one hand on either side of the leg. Coming back, go ahead and take a vinyasa from plank. Coming into your vinyasa, your cobra, down dog, walk it out, press back, maybe your heels really touch the mat this time. Inhale, look at the hands on your exhale, well, step or jump forward, inhaling half lift, exhale forward fold, inhale bring it all the way up. And Tadasana. Other side. This time we bring the left leg up. So whatever we did on the other side, we try to do on this side. And bring to the side. Just adding a little balance. If you want to do some funky arms, hands, flow, bring it forward. <laughs> And coming through for tree, excuse me, warrior three, into warrior two. Sinking in here. <sighs> Staying with your breath. Release the back hand, flip the front, peaceful warrior inside. Open the shoulders. You can look down. You can look up. And then come into your extended side angle. <sighs> Opening up once you're here. Where where are your glutes? Are they fired up? Are you core muscles engaged, come out for the beach ball if you want, holding here, coming back into a shelf, maybe you bind, once you bind, locking your hands and lifting up out of this and three more, holding here, tucking hips in, making sure your core is in this. And then unbind, pressing right hand down, bring that left hand up for a nice stretch and circles. Three each side. Other side. And then placing one hand on either side, coming into plank, taking a vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Mm. From here, let's do one of my 
One of my favorites, this is from the five Tibetans, and we do up dogs and down dogs. So you inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Let's do 10 of these. One. Two. Three. In. And just hang here. And let's take some Kali breaths. So these are so good for your stress, the Kali breaths. So just nice big inhale. You'll see me make a goofy face. Nobody will see you. So really, really go for it. If you're in regular class, you may be a little shy to do this, but don't be. Don't be shy. Let's just do this. But anyway, you're home now, so you can get used to it. Nice big inhale. And then <laughs> stick your tongue out. Open your eyes. Crazy leg. <laughs> And exhale, let's do this two more times. <sighs> Shake your head. <sighs> and then let's just inhale, look at our hands on our exhale, jump forward and come into Malasana squat. Yoga squat. <sighs> yes. So just hanging out here. And yoga squat for a little bit. We'll move into Bakasana, but let's just hang in here and give it a little yang moment, excuse me, yin moment. <sighs> and then if you want to try your crow, just place your hands in front of you. Bring your knees perhaps in your into your armpits or on your um, triceps, gently taking one foot and then the other coming into Bakasana. And then coming out of it back into Malasana squat. <laughs> Point our fingers out. We kind of joke and call this the Charlie's Angels. Take your left or right thumb if you're female, left thumb over right, male, right over left, and inhale, bring it all the way up. Reach up, exhale, down. Let's do this five times. One. Two. Three. Four, five, I guess it's six, sorry. And then come all the way up again. We're going to do a little, a little more balance. So maybe you want to get up against the wall. Maybe you want to just stay on your mat or off. Whatever you need, every day is different kickstand. Let's start grounding our left leg and you can kickstand your right, come up on your calf, above your knee, finding tree. Find a focus point. If your glutes are active, that helps too. And bring that knee up again and to the side again and then the front and if you'd like to try to reach down grab the big toe and bring it out these are tough I'm gonna move <laughs> against the wall myself so holding big toe out and then bring it to the side and then bring it to the forward you want to try to crunch in and then release it down. Good. These are really hard. 
these are Ashtanga inspired. So there you go. You're doing a little Ashtanga when you're in that. So let's go ahead and go around the right foot. Bring the left kickstand, uh, calf above the knee, and find your tree. And then reaching for that toe and bring it out and to the side. And then reaching for that toe. Sit back down and shake it out a little bit. Let's go ahead and inhale. Hands together, feet, heels just a little bit apart. And just lean over to the right side, stretching here in a half moon. Looking up if that works or down. Come all the way up. Stretch, reach, press the shoulders down. Exhale, other side. Reach, stretch, open. <laughs> Looking up or down. And then come back up. <sighs> and then come through prayer. All the way down, releasing the hands. Let's inhale up and exhale, just forward folding down, staying here, just breathing, resting, relaxing. And this nice fold, if you want to picture frame your hands again, excuse me, your face, thumbs in your elbow creases. And then just touching the mat, let's gently come back into tabletop. And maybe a few more cats and cows just finding our way back to the mat for a little more stretching and then let's come back back around and knees bent we're going to do a little core work here we're going to do uh, navasana that's boat so holding the shoulders back chest out core really firm up this core and maybe one foot and then the other or both if you want to take your hands behind your thighs and help lift your legs up or maybe challenge yourself to do that and keep them up if you want to come down in canoe come back up canoe and back up if you want to row in your canoe, paddling with your hands to either side, rowing with your legs, feet coming back in canoe, shoulders back up for boat, any way you want, <laughs> holding core, and then lowering on your count of five or six or seven. All the way down and take a nice big stretch. <sighs> Maybe flexing and pointing your feet. Bring your knees in and hug them. Rocking from side to side. And then just let your knees fall over to the right side. Letting your shoulder blades rest on the mat, arms out, heart chakra open wide. <sighs> heart open. If your head is turned, perhaps to the left, your knees are to the right. Or if you're the other way, just let your head face the opposite way that your knees are going. Having a few breaths here. And then inhale, bring those knees up. Maybe hug them again. Maybe pressing your knees out and in. Inhale out, squeezing in. Exhale. One more time. 
and then just let those knees go over to the other side. I'm going to the left, my head is going to the right, shoulder blades on the mat, reaching out with the hands. You can always intensify these twists, these spinal twists by taking one leg over the other or the bottom on top of the top one. Just if this is easy for you, there's always another step, something else you can do to stretch a little more. Just let the pose meet you where you are. Breathe. And coming up in this, rocking from side to side. And gently release your feet down onto the mat. If you have a prop and you want to take it easy, a book, a pillow, towels, a bolster, a block, lifting up, fingers should be able to graze the heels, hips lift up, clasp your hands underneath, keep your head looking up. Don't turn your head when you're in these poses. You could strain your neck, lift your hips up for bridge, press the hands down on the mat, they may be clasped. Wiggle the shoulders in so you can really open up the chest. Good. If you want a kind of little trick to get up a little higher, come up on your heels, lift up more, and see if you can hold it and, lo and then lower the heels. Do my best for you. And lift the heels up and lower down and lower the heels down maybe you want to do some lifting up with the sacrum then press down so you're having your hips up and down kind of releasing the sacrum a little more and then let's go ahead and move towards shoulder stand so bring your Arms in close, lifting your buttocks up, finding a way to support your hips. Don't turn your head. You may want to come in the cow. Let go of the knees. Coming out of this. When you're ready, take your time in that pose. It's a tough one, especially if you do deaf man's, bringing your knees by your ears. When you're ready, just hug your knees in again, rocking from side to side. Then I like to place my hands under my thighs and give my back both a horizontal and a vertical. And so you can do a little bow in the rock and roll and then just come back on your back reaching for your feet if that works of course we're in the last pose before the final pose which is shavasana so i chose most of the time actually i think uh, people like to do happy baby so we're doing happy baby now as the final active pose but um anything that you feel like you might need just go ahead and and do that now Otherwise, join me in happy baby. Pressing the knees toward the floor and re-rocking from side to side. This should feel really good, really relaxing. If you want to, hold your toes with your peace fingers. Stretch your legs all the way out and open them up. And then rock. And just bring your knees into your chest one more time. And give yourself a big hug and then just let your body roll all the way out onto the mat, taking a nice big stretch, flexing and pointing your feet. And beautiful. And then taking your hands by your side, opening your legs up just enough so that your body is completely at ease. Hands are maybe a half a foot or a foot on the outside of your body. 
And then before we go into Shavasana, just really tense your body up. And then release. Let's do that two more times. Tense the whole body up. And then release last time. <laughs> Inhale, tense. Maybe make a fist. And then release. Take your toes and let them kiss and let them flop out. So you should really be able now to completely release. When we tense, we feel an extreme, so that allows us to explore the opposite of that once we let go of the tension and we go deep into relaxation, moving into Shavasana, corpse pose, closing your eyes, bringing the breath in deep. Let's do five or six deep rounds of breath before we let our breath find a main pace. And then cycle, inhale. <laughs> Exhale, last one, inhale. Exhale. And then just let your breath fall as if it's floating off a cliff into the world fearlessly into the unknown, knowing that God, that God has this for you, so you have this, knowing that you're never alone, knowing that the only way to get through this is to just keep breathing, keep breathing, keep focusing on peace, sure. gently feeling the energy, the tingling, return to your fingers and toes, and then begin small movements, wiggling the toes, the feet, the fingers, the hands, maybe you do circles with your hands and your wrists and your feet, maybe you inhale and reach all the way up, stretch and again, flex and plank the feet. Bring the breath deep back into the body again. Exhale. <sighs> Inhale, bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a really big hug. Mm, squeezing yourself, giving yourself lots of love, lots of compassion. You can't give anything you don't have, so give yourself compassion and love first. Then you can share it and send it. Then you can receive it. Rocking from side to side. And then finding yourself rolling over onto whichever side you choose into fetal position. Our last couple of breaths here. Just enjoying this safety and security of fetal position. Telling yourself everything is fine. Everything is going to be fine. These are all lessons that we learn tests that you pass, mantras, gets us through it, placing the hands on the floor, gently pressing up, <sighs> and finding our way back to easy seated, placing our hands on our knees, on top of our knees, palms up. Let's go ahead and do a nice long om. Inhaling. Exhale. Um. Let's 
to that one time. Let this time bring hands to heart center. Inhale. Um. And then the last one, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring our hands all the way up to God, to sky, <laughs> reaching up, <laughs> acknowledging our connection as children as God, of God as creations of God, in gratitude to God, hands to forehead, to peace, hands to heart center, to love and compassion. And may the light in me and each one of us always honor the light in the other. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. I'm Missy at Thrive Yoga and Wellness. I'll be doing a variety of different uh, yoga classes, meditations, some kundalini, some slow, some gentle, some fired up power and uh, vinyasa. So just uh, keep tuning in on Thrive Online and Thrive Yoga and Wellness classes through Zoom. It's a lot of fun. We're having a blast. We're staying fit and positive. So see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>